Good morning, brothers and sisters. Okay. Mm, our topic this morning is train up a child, raising overcomers for Christ. And the key verse is in Proverbs 22, 6. It is our target that by the end of the meeting, you can memorize this verse, one sentence only. Okay. So you can remember a commandment of the Lord. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay. So may we all rise and have a word of prayer. Commit our time to God. Lord, we thank you for bringing us in your presence this Sunday morning to listen to your word, to know what you want us to do in uh, bringing our children unto you, Lord. And we ask, Lord, for your uh, Holy Spirit to touch each one of us, move us, and make your word a reality in our lives. Truly, may your presence be with us and touch each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Mm. Uh, it is very timely that uh, this morning we have our child dedication for quite some time. The pandemic, no? and even uh, the baby, baby Caleb was uh, born during the pandemic time. And uh, we thank the Lord that everything went well, and he was able to make it this morning. No? And three years old na siya, siya yung pinaka uh, may edad at medyo makulit na rin. And we will know that sooner or later, each one will be like him. No. So, ano lang yan eh. Uh, ano lang, time by time, no? may process. No? Uh, train up a child is a topic not only applicable for parents, no? also for grandparents. No? Kasi normally, grandparents, yaya na rin yan eh. No? And also the aunties and the uncles. No? They work together as a team. And also, the whole church, no, we train up a child. Kasi we, in here, we have our Sunday school, di ba? We train them to serve the Lord. Also, in our Friday fellowship, sa care group, may care group na for the young ones. No? We train them up. So, this is a timely topic for every one of us, applicable to everyone. And although the grandparents... Uh, and the uncles and aunties may help in training up a child, but the main responsibility is on the parents, training up a child. And parents should train them in the way they should go, because otherwise somebody else would come along and teach them, teach them another way. So, uh, if you, you don't uh, train them in the way they should go, they might go in another way. And probably sooner or later, it's too late to bring them back. And train up a child is not a suggestion. No? It is a commandment. It, it, it comes with a promise. Diba? When he is old, he will not depart from it, from him, from God's word. No? When he is old, literally, literally means when he reaches the age, when many teenagers go astray, he will stay. You know? When that child reaches puberty and maturity, he will keep on loving the Lord. You know? He will overcome for the Lord if you train him up early. So what does train up a child mean? Does it, does it mean just to raise up a child? Uh, train up means to prepare them for something big. Something big, a school called life. You know? We pre train them. You know? For this world is like a school. We learn every now and then. And this life is a school. You know? Not just the physical school. You know? And 
Uh, it means to instruct them by exercise, by example, no? molding them in the proper shape or behavior. No? And it may also mean discipline. And it begins from birth to maturity. Training can begin even as early as infants. No? They can be taught a feeding schedule and that not all crying gets immediate attention. And it progresses from uh, control stage to instruction stage to counseling stage. And it continues through puberty and maturity until a young adult creates a new home and starts the process over again. So it's a lifelong process. And they see your life as an example. You know, and they copy you. you know. There was there was once a housewife who was so busy much of the day preparing dinner for a group of friends. And that evening, as they were ready to eat, he she asked her three-year-old daughter to say the blessing. But the little girl was too shy and told her mom she did not know what to say. So her mom said, just say what you heard me or heard mommy say. So the young girl bowed her head, her head and prayed. Oh Lord, why did I invite these people to have dinner with us? Amen. So that was what she heard and what she prayed. So training up a child, he, she, the child will copy you, whatever you do, whatever you say. You know? They are little copycats. You know? And they will copy something they see and they hear, whether good or bad. You know? So what does train up a child mean? Does it simply mean discipline your children or something more than that? You know? Raising God's children is a bit more complicated than exerting discipline on them. Parents are called to love their children, listen to them, show them right and wrong, and lead them in their walk with Christ by example. So why, why is there a need, or why should we train up a child? No. There are four principles for child training. And first principle is that children, needs, children need training. You know? And reasons why need, a child needs training is because, number one, they are naturally ignorant. You know? They don't know what's right and wrong. In Proverbs 1.4, it says, For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion, to the young. No? Children do not know right from wrong. They are inexperienced and they, they lack knowledge and discretion. They need to be taught about things of the Lord, how to follow the Lord. They need to be taught not to lie, not to steal, not, and to disobey authority. No? Secondly, because they are immature. Proverbs 29.15 says, A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom, but child left undisciplined disgraces his mother. Children may know what is right, but without training, they do not have the willpower to choose what is right. If you just let the chil children make their own decisions, they most likely would make bad choices because of their lack of knowledge. And they may know what it, they may know it is wrong to steal, but they do not yet do not yet have that willpower to resist temptation. They may even desire to do what is right, but they lack the strength of character to do it. So they need guidance. And thirdly, for their inclination, their natural inclination. 
Proverbs 22, 15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it away. An example of a rod of discipline is spare the rod, spoil the child rod. Um, when, I, when I was a younger dad, somebody from the young people uh, gave us a rod of discipline. Brother Elijah Nang. He, he gave us this rod, and uh, in this rod, it states, Spare the rod, spoil the child. And uh, there's caption underneath it, I'll, I discipline you because I love you. No? And uh, we, we seldom use it once in a while, but after some time, probably some of the kids kept the rod. So, nawala na. I was looking for it. It's gone. But we, we thank the Lord, we seldom use it. At times, the, the kids, just by the mere look, they know. You know. When you speak to them, they obey. You know. And as much as possible, if you need to do it, kung hindi makuha sa salita, sa gawa. So, but we do it, not when you, you should do it, not when you are still angry. No. Baka mabali. No. So, just um, take the time, may God grant us wisdom how to use the rod of discipline. No. And because they are naturally foolish, no, and um, they are inclined to choose what is wrong, no, yun yung natural tendency. Eh, no? And it's easier to, for them to say no than to say yes. And every child has inherited the sinful nature of Adam and Eve. It's their natural inclination to do what is wrong rather than do what is right. And their natural inclination is self-centeredness rather than God-centeredness. And in fact, you don't have to teach them to be greedy. No? Natural tendency, I, me, and myself. So when you have a cookie, when you split it into half, yung mas maliit sa yung akin yung malaki. Yan ang natural. Bihira yung nagbigay. Siguro early early training yun. And um, and we we have been uh, in our house since two thousand one, and having a house requires constant upkeep. If you don't repair or repaint, your house would become a wreck. If you don't care and do maintenance, the house would deteriorate. And without proper training, also the children will go the wrong way. They will do evil than good, and they will run away from the Lord rather than follow God. So a child without training for life is like driving a car without lights at night. Neither of them will stay on the right, on the right path. And secondly, second principle is parents must embrace the role of a trainer. In Ephesians 6, Four, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. No? A, par a parent is not only a pro an advisor or a friend or a chauffeur or Santa Claus, but rather a parent should be a trainer. No? And surely parents' role is to provide in 1 Timothy 5.8, it says, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith is worse than an unbeliever. And also, a parent's job is to protect. You know, as the Lord protects His people, you know, in Deuteronomy 32.10-11, In a desert land, 
He found him in a barren and howling waste. He shielded him and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wing to catch them and carries them aloof. That's their role as a parent, to provide and to protect. And if the parent is a trainer, then the parent's job is to prepare. And this is the meaning of training that you prepare your kids. And if you see yourself as a provider, a protector, but fail to see yourself as a trainer, you will fail. What are we to prepare our children for? Four things we should prepare our children for. First is for life's mission. As stated in, in the verse, in uh, the Passion Translation, dedicate your children to God, point them in the way they should go, and the values they've learned from you will be with them for life. No? You, your mission, their mission for life is to go the way of the Lord. No? Teach them the way they should go. No? And that your child were given to you by God. No? It is not by chance. No? Other parents were not able to have a good chance to have children. No? And it's a blessing and a gift from the Lord. And God created these children for His glory, no? that they may be the next generation to serve the Lord, that there will be remnants no? serving God, doing His work, no? bringing uh, glory to God, serving Him the rest of their lives. And secondly, we prepare them for life's battle, for life's challenges. No? In Psalm 144, verse 1, Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. No? Because our children will be headed, will be heading for troubled water. It is for certain. No? Nakikita ko pa lang yung mga young kids when I was Growing up, talagang school is a bit, a, a great training. And uh, going to trepasses of many years in school, bringing them to school, studying the assignments, no, it's a battle. No? As it's troubled water, it's a storm. No? And they will face many difficult trials in life, uh, probably sickness, uh, rejection, failure, no? We prepare them for these battles. It's like um, the prophet Daniel, no? When he entered the king's service in, her, in his younger years, no, in G Daniel 1, no, he had a strong faith in the Lord, a strong conviction not to devile himself from food, over, for, food offered to idols or food that are unclean for Christians. No? He had a strong faith. And yung, his foundation is quite strong when he was young, when he was in his homeland. He was trained up no, to defile, not to defile himself. That's why when he went into Babylon, he stood strong together with his three friends. No? They started young. And we prepared them for life's decision. No? In another translation of uh, Proverbs 22, 6, teach a child to choose the right path, and when he is older, he will remain upon it. So we teach them to choose the right path. The older your child gets, the more decisions they will make without you. And it is easy for them to make choices when you are making choices for them. But your, child is to, but your job is to prepare them to make the right choices. And fourthly, uh, we prepare them for life's landmines. What are these landmines? First Peter 5, 8, be alert and sober 
be alert and be of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to defar. No? Life is filled with landmines, and Satan had laid traps all over the path. No? Landmines like peer pressure, sexual immorality, immorality drugs, alcohol, no? or plainly laziness, or obesity. No? You won't be able to protect your child when they grow up or move out. No? You will not be able to protect them all the time. No? But it is your duty to prepare them. No? At any time they move out or they go on their own, they are prepared for life's landmines. And the, the greatest gift parents can give their children is the ability to get along without them. You know, to get along with friends, with people, or even work in his own. Even without you, he has ability to get along. And third principle, training should be hard. No. Hebrews 12.11 tells us, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. No. So, kaya no pain, no glory. So, kailangan talagang hard training. Training is not enjoyable, it is painful. And effective training is not easy. It is uncomfortable and it is challenging and painful. And it is not our job to make life too easy for the kids. They need special training, they need preparation. No, not just protection or provision. No, that means you must guard them against making life too easy for the kids. No, the harder the training, the more prepared the children can become. No, and the best teachers are the toughest. No, they are um, the strictest teacher. They push the hardest. They are the most serious and they expected the most. And likewise, the best coaches are the strictest. No? Why should they be strict? Because the harder the coach, the better the team. No? The harder the practice, the, be the easier the game. The tougher the coach, the more the team is prepared for the battle in the field. But we are not saying that parents should be unaffectionate or unloving. We are not saying that parents should be authoritarian or abusive or domineering. What we're saying is that parents' job is to train, and the best trainers are the toughest. It's like when we had our Friday fellowship in our care group, when we had our uh, discussion on controlling the time of gadgets for the kids. You know? And in, in one of our uh, group discussions, somebody shared yung child training niya is you make the children earn their points. You know? Don't make it too easy for them. If, do, if they want additional time for gadget, you, know, you give them points. Or you should help in household work. It's a great training. You know? Wash the dishes, clean the room. You know? And um, also in, uh, in our younger years, we train our children, if you want to go for a vacation, you, you should help in household core. And one, one way to uh, make them do um, writing composition is uh, require them that if you go to the vacation, you should write a composition, what you learn the most in this vacation, you know, what you like the most. Don't ask them to write something negative, what you dislike the most, or 
what's worse in the vacation, but something positive. Always teach them something positive. You know? now, some, some parents make it their mission in life to protect their children from all pain, hardship, failure, and sadness. But that is not training a child. You know? That is, at times, crippling the child. You, know? you should prepare them for hardship. And our job is not only to make our children happy and comfortable, not to entertain them, but to train them. And your job is not only to protect them from pain, failure, and sadness. Your job is to prepare them for these things and effective training involves pain and hardship. And fourth principle, children must be trained up for the Lord. Diba yung phrase natin, train up a child in the way he should go. No. Our job as a parent is to train up, to train our kids up. No. We train them up uh, heavenward. No. We train them up to the Lord. No. Not looking down, no? not horizontal, but look up to the Lord. No? Kasi pag horizontal, you see the things around you, the world. No? But um, we trained up a child heavenward, pointing them to God. No? Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. No? Where Christ is seated, at the right hand of God, and set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So we are instructed to teach our kids to set their hearts on things above. And secondly, our job is to train them, train them up in the way. So what's the way? No. John 14, 6 tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So this is what Jesus said. He is the way. We point our children to Jesus. And a third part of the praise is in the way they should go. No? The way they should go. Not the way they want to go. No? Not the way you want the world to and teach them to go, no? Because in Proverbs 16, 25 tells us, there is a way that appears to be right, but the end leads to death, no? So our job is not to help our children in the way they want to go, but rather encourage them in, into the way they should go, no? And point them up to the Lord. So, how do we train up a child in a godly way? No. The, way, the way we train up a child is highly influential for the rest of his life. And the best time to train them is while they are young. No? Okay. Hindi applicable sa kanila yung teach the old dogs new tricks. No? They are fresh start pa lang, we teach them. It's like in the case of King Josiah, when uh, he was eight years old, he was crowned or made king of Judah. And he was a good king who loved the Lord. And um, he led his people in the way of the Lord. They restored the temple. And he was trained up as a young child by Godly priest. No. Okay. His training when he grew up, he followed the Lord completely. So raising godly children is more complicated than just discipline. No. And a way to teach them is through God's word. No. Number, number one. Um, God gave us a training manual. No. We have God's word ever since nandiyan yan. Generation after generation, the word stays the same. No. So, we have his training manual 
to teach us and guide us. And it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And the best way to train up and prepare our children for life is to teach them to understand, to believe, to read, and obey the Bible. And if you want them to read the Bible, you read it yourself. No. They will see you, they know if you read or not. You will be an example. And uh, this is a very a strict commandment of, of the Lord in Deuteronomy 4, chaka, verse 6. No? May we all rise and read this important uh, verse, two verses. No? Deuteronomy 4, 9. Um, Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Another verse. When I give you today hearts, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down, and when you get up. Okay, please be seated. Thank you. Sana na-impress sa heart natin. No? You talk with them about God's Word every day. No? 24-7, even in your vacation. Pray. Secondly, pray with them. No? And we teach our children how to pray by Praying with them. We sit down with them and pray and um, talk to them, pray about their life and the lives of their loved ones. You know? Pray about knowing God's will and uh, the wisdom in the decisions that have to be made. You know? There were two young boys spending the night at their grandparents. You know? And at bedtime, the two kids knelt down before their beds to say their prayers. And suddenly, the youngest boy began praying at the top of his voice. I pray for new bicycle. I pray for new PlayStation. I pray for new iPad. Then his older brother leaned over his younger brother and said, Why are you shouting your prayers? God is not deaf. But the little boy replied, No, but grandma is. So, at times, we expect the kids that their prayers would be heard by our grandparents or the parents. But rather, we train them that our prayers, our prayers should be toward the Lord. He will answer our prayers by faith. So, I believe that if we train up our children in the proper way, they will have the faith to believe that their prayers will be answered, whether allowed or not. No. And um, we teach them to pray by faith. And thirdly, we lead by example. No. The strongest way parents can keep God's word is by leading them through your example. And children learn through observance, observing others, and, oper- and oftentimes, um, they observe their parents. And young children uh, will learn what you model for them. You know? So if you have a strong relationship with God, you know, they will know. And if you have that strong relationship with God, you, they can see it and they will decide to have that strong relationship with God. If you want your children to go to church, you go to church, you know. If you want them to read the Bible, you read the Bible. And lastly, I, fourth, you know, teach them how to love by loving them unconditionally. When it comes to loving our children, we should love them unconditionally as 
God the Father has loved us unconditionally. Now, what does this look like in practice? It is loving your child without, with no strings attached. You know? And there is nothing they can do to lose your love. And this does not mean that you do not discipline your child, but it means that you do not withhold your love because of something they did wrong or something they said that was wrong. When your child knows you have um, unconditional love for them, it forges a trust between you and them. And that would build a good relationship with you and with your child and allows them to feel safe and secure in your home. And lastly, you help them serve others. You know, raising children in a godly way includes helping them serve others. You know, in Matthew 5, 42, give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. you know, we are called to care for the poor, the sick, and the needy, not to sit at the comfort of our homes and forget about the needy people. And and these values and principles that need to be passed on, are, they need to be passed on to our children. Now we can take our children to serving opportunities by allowing them to join the repacking, when we have our repacking activities, or allowing them to join the mission possible team, you know, visiting, visiting orphanages. You know. And this helps you uh, helps the children learn how Jesus lived and the importance of helping others. So training a child, training up a child is a big task and a great responsibility. And we need God's grace, the power of the Holy Spirit, His wisdom and discernment to raise our kids up for the Lord, to raise overcomers for Christ. And each child has a different behavior, different attitude, a different character. And each child reacts or responds differently for the training and the, the discipline they receive. So we let us do our best. We commit all things to the Lord. You know, we, we cannot control our children, but we can train them, train them up. You know? And uh, let us do our best, and God will take care of the rest. Okay? To summarize, um, why should we train up a child? The, the four principles we mentioned. Uh, children need training. Parents must embrace the role of a trainer. Training should be hard, and children must be trained up for the Lord. You know? And how, we, how do we train up a child? You know? We have the training manual, teach them God's word, pray with them, lead by example, Teach them how to love by loving them unconditionally. Help them serve others. You know? So we can remember what we have learned this morning and be able to memorize and train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he shall not depart from it. We have an acronym, CHILD. You know? C stands for Christ. Lead them to Christ. H for holiness. You know? Teach them about holiness of the Lord, living a holy life because God is holy. I give them instructions from the Bible. L, love them unconditionally. Train up the discipline. Walang train up without discipline. So this morning we have this acronym, CHILD. So may we all, have, may we all rise up and have a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to listen to your word this morning. And uh, we ask, Lord, whatever you have placed in our hearts, may you cause it to be a reality. May you make us a living example to the next generation coming before us. No, we know, Lord, that we cannot live a perfect life but by your grace, your mercy, Lord, you would enable the children to be trained up for your glory. 
Lord, we are in your hands. They are in your hands. We trust that you have a good plan and purpose for them. And we pray you would grant us the grace, your wisdom, Lord, to bring them up unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a few announcements, but uh, thank you, uh, Brother Johnny, for sharing this morning and reminding us how important it is to train up a child in the way that they should go. Here are four the announcements. Uh, uh, every Tuesdays, we still have our prayer meetings, so let us set up a good example for uh, the future. Let us uh, all join the prayer meetings. On Friday, we still have our, our Bible study, and this week it will be on chapter 3. The title is, To the State of the Heart. Uh, it will be moderated by our sister, Faith Ong. Okay, we invite everybody to join the care group meetings, and if you're not part of uh, the care groups uh, and you want to, uh, kindly contact our brother, Paul Paul. Sunday school, uh, every Sunday, it's no, no vacations, there are no holidays, every week, okay? Remind your children to join the Sunday school. Next, Lord's Day is the breaking of bread, and we would like to announce uh, that it will start at 10 a.m., okay? Uh, it will no longer be at 9.30, but 10 a.m., okay? Next Lord's Day, our brother Lee will be sharing, and his title is Baptism. Is it a religious tradition or a spiritual reality? So uh, we'll see you next week. That's the end of our announcements, and uh, kindly join us downstairs for some coffee and refreshments. Thank you. God bless.